In this presentation, we'll continue on with the vendor section. We're going to be considering the check form. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our demo company dashboard. We'll start by opening up our form. So we're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to go down to the balance sheet. As the balance sheet opens or when it opens, I'm going to right click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab, make it another tab for it. Going back to the tab to the left, we're going to do the same thing for the income statement. We're going to select the accounting drop down, select the income statement. And when that pulls up, then we're going to be copying that as well. So. So we'll go up to the tab up top, right click on it and duplicate that tab. So then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. Now, just to consider our flow chart, uh, we're going to go back to the QuickBooks desktop in the vendor section. Now, the typical vendor section, the full cycle flow chart would be to enter the uh, bills like the Verizon and whatnot, and then to pay them off. Obviously, though, we could we can just simply write a check. And that might be something we do for our standard type of bills or simply make a payment. We might be having those payments being made electronically. Now you could rely simply on the bank feeds and wait for the bank feeds to come in place if you're doing electronic payments or even if you're doing checks. However, the, traditionally the full service system would be that you'd want to enter the checks into the system when you make the payment and then use the bank feeds to double check. So we'll talk more about bank feeds uh, later, but even if you're not using bank feeds, then you still might enter the information into the system with a check as you write the check as opposed to going through the accounts payable. Now note in QuickBooks desktop, they don't put the check uh, form up top in the vendor section, even though most of the time we write a check, it is to a vendor. It's going to be down here in other. Why? Because there are other things we can write a check for. It might not be for the normal expenses. We might be writing a check for you know equipment or something like that or some, some other uh, outflow. And so they put it down here, but note that normally when we write a check, most of the time it is to a vendor and you could kind of think of it then as part of the purchasing section or part of the vendor section, a check for vendors, money's going out for, for expenses or for inventory that's being purchased. So how would we write a check? If we go back over and go back to our dashboard in zero, I'm going to select the drop down up top. So I'm going to select the drop down and we don't have something that just says check here, but we have to spend money. So we're going to say spend money form. Uh, one format of spending money would be the check. And we could use this form then whether we're just making a, some other form of payment like an electronic transfer or something like that or a check. The check would typically be going out of the checking account. So I'm going to say next checking account and next. Then we have our information up top. Now I'm going to make up a new vendor. It's called Edison. That's going to be our, our um, utilities. We're going to say electric and I'll make this as of, let's say, let's bring it out to April, April 15th and reference number. Now, if it's a check, you could say pay as check here, right? If it's not a check, you're not going to check that off. What's the difference? Well, if it's not being paid by check, if it's an electronic transfer or something like that, or you're paid it by the phone or something like that, and you want to enter it into the system, then you don't want it to assign a check number because you want the check numbers to be assigned to the checks, right? That's really the main difference that you have here. It's still going to show up on the register. It's still going to be a decrease to cash, but you want the internal control of when you write a check to have the external check numbers appearing. So if you have a check, then you can, there's two ways you could do this. You, if you're actually writing a physical check to Edison, you could have a separate checkbook, like a little checkbook, checkbook that you're handwriting and you're writing the check. And then you still want it to be reflected in the system as a check instead of another payment, even though you're not using zero to print the checks. So you could then still check this off, write the check and just make sure that the check number assigned should match the check number in your little checkbook. Or you can, you can purchase full size checks, usually, you know, full sheet paper checks typically that you can then put into the printer and print along with, uh, with this system and then print out those checks. So, and, and either way, the check number is already going to be on the pre-printed checks as you do this. So then we're going to say, it's not going to be an item. Uh, the description, you could put a description to uh, utilities. I'm going to put the amount is going to be, uh, I'm just going to say 80. I'm going to say this is utilities. So it's going to say utilities and region. I'll choose the region for the West. And so we have the $80 to the utilities. So what's this going to do? Decrease the cash. And it's going to be increasing the utilities expense, making the net income go down. So then I can say save. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And here's the paycheck information. 
So we could print this now. If we want to print this one at a time, we could say, I, I want to um, save and print to the PDF. So I'm going to save and print it. Here then is the actual PDF of the check. Again, note that it doesn't have the check number up top because if you want to actually print this on a physical check, then you need the pre-printed checks that have the check number on it. That's the internal control for it. You can put those, make sure you put it into your, your printer in the right format. I would test it with a piece of paper, make a piece of paper, mark it top, bottom, at front, back, put it into the printer, figure out how the printer prints these things, then use the checks so that you don't have to mess up the check number. If your check number doesn't tie out, if you print out on a wrong check and it's printed backwards or something, you're going to have to void the check because you want to keep that internal control of having the check numbers uh, line out. So, so keep that in mind as you go. So that's one way you could, you could go through and print the checks. Also note that if you go to the business dropdown, you have multiple checks. You can enter multiple checks into the system, then go to the business dropdown and go to the checks and, and um, then select multiple checks to print. So if you want to print you know, multiple checks at the same time, then you can go over here and select multiple checks and print them at the same time. So I could just go through here and say I want to print, you know, these checks and then print them to the PDF rather than one at a time. And then it'll create the PDF file with multiple checks in it, right? Now we've got a PDF file that has multiple checks and you can put then multiple checks into the printer and print them all at one time. Again, making sure that you have the, the paper in there at the right format so that it prints them all properly in the right in the right order. Once you get that system down, then of course you can print multiple checks at the same time. What's the effect on the financial statements? Well, if we go over to the balance sheet, then we know of course cash will be going down. And uh, I'm gonna change the date up top because I think we put it in there in like April or something. So I'm gonna make it, let's go out to May and then I'm gonna update. Then I'm gonna be looking for our account. Now it's not gonna be up top because we're overdrawn in the checking account. So don't let that throw you off. It's in the liability section because we're overdrawn in it. So we're going to go down to the checking account down below. We're then looking for that check to Edison, which was like in uh, in April. So here it is. Edison, there's the check. If I was to select that $80, then we would go into that check. Here it is. So here's the money spent. And I'm going to go then back. I'm going to go back to just take a look at our transaction detail in the check register or in the account transactions report. And you can see here that it's, it's labeled money spent. So money spent, that's going to be money going out and that's going to include checks or some other format. The other side will of course be on the income statement. So it's going to be in the income statement. If we update that, we wrote a check for utilities. So we should have utilities expense down below. So if we scroll back down, we're going to say that uh, we're looking for the utilities. There it is. So we'll pick up the utilities. And then scrolling down, here's the Edison item once again.